Ukraine has begun using dragon drones on the front lines. The goal behind this may be to strike fear into the hearts of Russian soldiers, military experts believe. As Business Insider reports, last week Ukrainian military sources shared dramatic footage that appeared to show drones flying at low altitudes spraying fire on invader landings. The molten material is thermite, a mixture of aluminium powder and iron oxide that burns at temperatures of up to 4,000 degrees when ignited, said James Patton Rogers, a drone expert and executive director of the Cornell Brooks Institute for Technology Policy. But spreading thermite via drones is a newer tactic, he said. The use of drones to deploy this molten payload is a new and terrifying addition to modern warfare, said Patton Rogers. The Horn Group, a branch of Ukraine's 116th Mechanized Brigade, claimed in one of their videos that they were burning orcs. It's hard to hide from a termite, said Patton Rogers. He added that the videos would likely boost Ukrainian morale and that such tactics could force them to retreat, to push back the Russians through fear and fire. The widespread use of drones in the skies above the battlefield is terrifying enough, but those below now have to contend with the literal threat of molten metal and fire pouring down from above, Patton Rogers said. Overall, little is known about the operational objectives of the attacks which are visible in the fiery drone videos in both southeastern and eastern Ukraine. The dropping of thermite munitions into the hatches of the occupiers' tanks has also been recently documented. They have burned out Russian armor from the inside. The use of thermite has raised concerns among some observers, including the advocacy group Action on Armed Violence. Last week, the group wrote about its concerns that its use could spread to civilian areas. The precision of drones combined with the indiscriminate and easily spreadable flames of thermite is a devastating combination, the group wrote. The outcome could be catastrophic with horrific injuries and loss of civilian life. Ian Overton, the group's executive director, said in the article, Thermite is not banned for use against enemy forces, but there are clear protocols that prohibit its use against civilian targets. Patton Rogers said, in May 2022, Ukraine accused Russia of using thermite shells to attack the Azovstal steel plant in Mariupol during Ukraine's notorious defense of the facility. The psychological impact of these latest strikes is likely the primary operational objective, Patton Rogers said. The actual strategic impact of the dragons will be minimal, and Russia can always respond with like for like, he said, since Ukraine has a limited number of these systems. Nicholas Drummond, a defense industry analyst specializing in land warfare, gave a similar assessment, saying thermite drops themselves were not game changers. If Ukraine wants to achieve real influence, it needs sufficient mass to make a proper breakthrough, as it did at Kursk. That's what victory looks like. The effect of such tactics will be more psychological than physical, he said. The Kursk operation helped Ukraine seize an area the size of Los Angeles and put Russia in an awkward position. It also appears to be disrupting Russia's rail system. And if the US agrees to Ukraine's demands to allow deeper strikes into Russia using American-made missiles, Russia's ability to move troops and supplies could be seriously damaged, Business Insider reports. Russia depends on the railway to transport troops and weapons. Russian units do not have the organic transport capacity to operate away from railheads. The problem today is that the massing of forces from all over Russia, some 30,000 troops, according to Ukrainian estimates, to block a Ukrainian invasion is overloading railheads in the Kursk area and creating a shortage of locomotives. Russian railways were already in poor condition before the Kursk operation. Russian bloggers warned that Western sanctions against ball-bearing exports to Russia had led to poor maintenance and a shortage of locomotives. Russian railway officials were reportedly threatened with punishment, and in 2023, Russian railway management admitted that 42,600 trains had been cancelled last year due to a lack of locomotive maintenance and spare parts. 
Experts say Russia's rail system has enough depth to cope with disruptions. A Ukrainian invasion could force Russia to reroute military logistics to the Kharkov front via neighboring regions. This would extend the time it takes to get supplies from the Leningrad and Moscow military districts, but it is unlikely to be a significant delay said Callum Fraser, a Russia expert at the Royal United Services Institute, a think tank in Britain. However, Ukraine has collected data on the Russian rail system, which would make disruption easier, Fraser said. The digitalization of Russian rail infrastructure, including aspects such as the integrated infrastructure management system, means that Ukraine has access to data on arms shipments from the captured rail station. There may be more weaknesses in this system that Ukraine could exploit, the expert added. Ukrainian aircraft have already destroyed several bridges over the Seam River east of Kursk. However, the Biden administration has refused to grant Ukraine permission to launch long-range ATACMS missiles at targets in Russia across the Ukrainian-Russian border. Baros believes that Ukraine could seriously disrupt Russian rail traffic and logistics if the US lifts these restrictions. The Russian rail network in the Bryansk, Kursk, Oryol, Belgorod and Voronezh regions has some natural bottlenecks where these rail lines go over bridges to cross rivers. It would be great if, for example, Ukrainian forces could reduce the ability of Russian forces to use the rail in this sector by using ATACMS to destroy these rail bridges, Baros said.